بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب زدنی علم و علیقنی بالصالحین فاطر السماوات والارض انت ولی فدنیا و الاخرہ توفنی مسلم و علیقنی بالصالحین All knowledge belongs to Allah. All knowledge comes from Him. We have a little knowledge to share with one another. My colleagues, my dear teachers, this lecture is meant for the teachers of English. I hope they will take maximum benefit from it. As a humble teacher of English, having 50 years experience, right from first year to MA English and CSS thesis classes, I would say that English is an important language. You take more interest in it, things will go very well. An English teacher should be good at English, especially in the sense or in parts of vocabulary, meanings of words, use of words, syntax, sentence formation, reading text and poetry and so on. An English teacher can make marvels in the class provided he is true to himself and true to his job. He has to shoulder a great responsibility because 20, 30 or 40 students or maybe more than two, three classes go to teach every day. Every day he can make marvel. He can make wonders through his speech, through his explanation, expression, words, their meaning, their synonyms and antonyms and so on. An English teacher is a good ambassador of knowledge like other teachers of chemistry, physics, biology, mathematics, and so on. Every language has its good things in it, like Sindhi, Arabic, Persian, and French, Dutch, and German. English language is rich in vocabulary. We inherit this language from the English people. They ruled us for about one century and a quarter. We were slaves. We were their master subjects, but they left with good things with us. English language is, is one of them. Wherever they went, they planted the plant of the English language there. The same is very much true of the sub subcontinent. Look at the, at the people living in Bangladesh and India. Learned people, educated people are very good at English. They have marvelous English to their credit. They can write well, speak well, and they can teach well. And take example of Finland, smallest country on the earth. It's well known for its teaching methodology, curriculum, and teaching discipline. Most of the people from all over the world go there to learn how to teach. They have their language finished, but they believe that English is one of the most important languages in the world. And through English communication and a medium, they can play marvels. So we people who have got English from the, our rulers, past rulers, we can also make wonders by teaching English in the very best way possible. English is taught as a second language because it is not our native language. Our national language is Urdu, then we have native language, provincial languages, and then we have other languages. So, by the way, English is our second language. So, this is improved through practice, through translation method, through reading traditionary, to reading text and context. Simply reading newspaper or something else won't go well. For a teacher, he has to be very hard working, very hard working. I believe that teacher may be at the lowest level, maybe primary, secondary, high secondary. He can do, he can do very well, provided he works very hard. Work is worship. And Allah loves those who are hard working people. We should not work only for money we get for making our living or satisfying our needs. That is very important, no doubt, I believe. But people who work for the nation, for the development of their country, for the betterment of their students, especially teachers, they are held high everywhere in society. And I hope so you will be doing that on the right level, in the right interest, in the good interest, and very well as, as much as you can do. In Pakistan, there are many schools where English is taught as a medium of instruction. And for every subject, there is English as medium of instruction. And they go very well. Through English, students who are good at English or want to be good at English go very well. Teachers work very hard with them. They teach them subjects in English medium. And as a result, 
the students get very good grades in English medium. And those students who are really very good at English, they appear at competitive exams, maybe engineering, PCS, CSS, and they do very well, only because of English. I met some students, candidates, successful candidates, they said we had learned English at schools and colleges, and that helped us a lot. Teacher worked with us very well, and we developed a lot. So after having passed the degree in engineering, medical, business, law, they went for complete exams and got through with flying colors, only because of good English. They spoke English fluently, wrote very well, sensibly, and they got through. So it is English that helped them a lot. So teachers who really have some concern about students' English and they are really interested in English, they do very well. Teaching adds knowledge. Teaching aids, language laboratory, audio, video. Maybe you don't have these facilities. But wherever these facilities are available, teachers can work very well because they add to their knowledge. They help them communicate the knowledge in the best way possible, in the shortest possible time. So in this way, English language can help them a lot. Reading prose as lessons. Poetry is the most very very early, means earliest genre of literature. Everybody composed poetry. Those who were interested in it, right from Chaucer or pre chaucerian age, people composed poetry. So, by reading poetry, you have to be a poet. Think these things are happening to you. These things are from the core of your heart. When you keep yourself placed in the same frame of mind, your poetry will go well. It will speak a lot about your mind, your language and your spirit and soul behind it. It's a great message. And also prose. There are certain prose works you read like poetry. Like poetry of Milton, Shakespeare. They look like poetry. It's called poetical prose. So while reading poetry, have a good look at words. And always shuffle the dictionary. Read their different shades of meanings. That will add to your vocabulary. Once you enrich your vocabulary, you will be in a masterly position, very good position to impart your knowledge to the teacher, students. So reading prose as lessons helps you teach very well. So before going to class, go through the lesson, have a good look at the words, read, look up their meaning in the dictionary and also look for multiple choice of the words. Once you read lesson, you can make marvels, you can add more to the knowledge of the students. And these students, who are at your disposal, in your class, they are just like your friends, your children. Teach them as your own children. Once they grow up, they attain high position, they will never forget you. They will remember you in the core of their hearts because you have given them the best you have. Reading with deliberation means slowly, slowly. In this way, students can learn very well. Reading fast, haphazardly, and without any sense, that will go in vain. It's better to read deliberately, phrases and sentences should be clear, so the students can follow you. And never get angry at the questions raised by the students. Always respond to their, respond to their questions in a friendly way, so that they can learn. And I have learned many things from my students. I believe that students are also a source of knowledge for teachers. When a teacher listens to questions and answers patiently, that adds to his or her knowledge. Because questions raised by students are also part of knowledge, indispensable knowledge, very valuable knowledge. Explaining important words, phrase idioms is very important. Reading for full comprehension. Don't just read in a fast way or just killing time. Read with comprehension. First you understand them then make them understand. Comprehension is understanding. It's very important for text, especially literal meaning of sentence, literal meaning of the message given it, then maybe sentence connected with the other sentence. That will make contextual meaning, means related meaning of sentences. That will be synthetic. And you have to analyze that synthetic sense, means combined sense, elaborated one by one. That will make complete comprehension. Because students don't have that much knowledge you have. You have to add to their knowledge. They are clean slate. 
or a clean sheet of paper, you have to put some ink on it. You have ink. You have to ink message on the mind. That will make very great sense. And a student's mind is really delicate. They are very sharp, mentally sharp. They understand a lot. The way you communicate or impart your knowledge, it is just ingrained or in or carved on their mind, just on a piece of furniture or wood. In that sense, reading comprehension makes wonders. Make students respond to questions. When you raise question, they respond to it. They will understand also the meaning of the text they have gone through or listen to the teacher by reading his text. Reading poetry with emphasis, deliberation and proper punctuation. Poetry has very great message in it. Poetry is not like simple sentences in structure and according to grammar rules. Poetry conveys ideas through words. Sometimes you don't have punctuation mark or verb in them, and sometimes great words are missing from the poetry. But it is used word that makes sense. It can be in blank verse. It can be rhythmical, means sweet. So you have to make them understand the proper meaning of the line there. Okay. And every poetry, there is poet behind. Whatever poet has said, you are the representative or communicator or ambassador of the poet. You have to communicate the same ideas to the student in the frame of mind as poet has communicated. That is your real part or sense. In that sense, the readers or students or listeners will understand a lot. For example, daffodils, million words. Good teachers mention this poem or elaborate the ideas in a way, in the way of dancing as daffodils dance here and there, beside a lake, under trees. So you have to be an actor, a good pronouncer of words, a good communicator of ideas, and a person in rich vocabulary. And only in this sense you can make marvels. For example, happiness in poetry is gaiety, gaiety. For player also gaiety. For poet we say poet. English it is poetry. It is bard, b a r d. Normally for singer, person who sings. But the poet is minstrel, minstrel. Likewise, for girl, for boy, we have different words. So we have to say that also mind poetry diction. That what is the proper word in poetry for this sense? You have to give that meaning also to the students. So slowly and gradually, your student will be able to enrich their vocabulary, ideas, and the sense communicated in the poem, and they will be able to write poems by themselves. Only with the help of your elaboration, commentary, analysis, and descript description, teaching poet diction is very important. Apart from prose, in poetry there are particular words, as I said earlier. For example, lay means song. L a y lay means song. Chant means to say or sing. Notes means songs. Notes of sweet birds. As in Shakespeare's "Under the Greenwood Tree," notes mean songs. We write notes with pen and a piece of paper. We jot down certain ideas, we take ideas of teacher during lecture and so on. But here, notes mean songs, because birds doesn't know art of poetry. They don't know rhyme, rhythm, meter, or balance. They don't know what is blank verse or what is rhythmical poetry. They simply sing the way nature or creator has given them. Parrot sings the way it sings. Nightingale sings the way it always sings. May it be may it belong to Australia, New Zealand, Pakistan, or some other country. So their songs are called notes. Means sweet songs. Lad for boy and lass for girls. Man, the man. Man is adjective, adjective. But when say the man means the sea, the ocean. The deep means thing having gravity, like grave. Ocean, but here when we add the to the deep, it means ocean, big sea. So these words are known as poetic diction. So you have also be good at poetic diction to communicate idea to the students. You have to be actor, player, singer, teacher, brother, friend, and much more. Your students are sharp-minded; they learn quickly. Teach them composition. Also tell them what composition is. Jotting down ideas on a piece of paper. 
may be randomly, that will help them much. Make them freelancer, means write without deliberation at the first stage. Once they are on the track, they can go very well. Then take their assignment, their choice of words, their writing, their punctuation marks, their grammatical rules and other things. Teach them writing about a topic, maybe friendship, your country, your school, your college, your aim of life, the best game you like, your favorite book and so on. Begin with the storytelling. Tell them some story in an interesting way, step by step with a moral. Then they will learn how to write a story. Almost every story is written in past tense, means some event of the past. Maybe about a king, a queen, a fairy, a country, a bird, a friend and so on. So story writing will help them write some ideas smoothly. They will make them a good writer. Then tell them how to create ideas, for example, concrete ideas, abstract ideas. Writing about a country, maybe a book, maybe a pen, maybe a province, maybe yourself, that is concrete writing. But when it comes to abstract topics like honesty, discipline, morality, enthusiasm, criticism, aesthetics, that will make completely abstract ideas. So make them write something from their mind, give them hints, some outline, some vocabulary, then check how they are going and believe that, they, believe that they will go very well. Because once you work with them honestly and dedicatedly, they will write good pieces of writing. And with the passage of time, they will be good writers. You won't believe that they are the same student as you taught them. They can go very well. Depends how much you put in them. Your dedication, your honesty, your delivery, Mac Marvel. Writing on abstract topics, love, honesty, piety, courage, as I said earlier, they are very good topics. First read them, write yourself, give them outline on the whiteboard or blackboard, then they make them write. Maybe for 10 minutes, they will create something. I remember I went to a friend of mine, he's my student as well. His son in class 10 or class 12, and some in class 2 and 3 and 1, I had a look at their books, freelancing. They wrote with good pieces of writing. Our students are just like hot iron. Mold them as the way you like. You will make them very good persons, writers, readers, students, and workers. And they will remember you always. No matter where they may be, they will never forget you. Once you work hard with them, they are with you, or you are with them spiritually, morally, mentally, physically, and by any means. They are your, just like words, your friends, and your countrymen. Is speaking English with come preparation or without preparation? Sometimes, haphazardly, just extemporarily, without any preparation. Why come out? You speak on topic, the guy is the founder of Pakistan. You speak on Yagatali Khan. You speak on Prophet Muhammad's character. Boys, girls, they are good speakers and they can express their ideas vehemently, forcefully. Also, class discussion, some topic, maybe from the textbook you have just read or read earlier. Make them discuss among themselves. They will talk to one another. You said, overhear them, how they are going. Make necessary correction, encourage them. Never criticize them or talk ill about their language because they are in the process of learning. They are in the form of formation and making. They are in the period of learning something. They are just like young scholars. They will go well if you encourage them. Never discourage them. You speak to them in English because English language, as a teacher of English, you can give them many pieces of advice maybe in fragments, in classes, in prose, in poetry, maybe in parts of his speech, maybe small sentences, they learn everything. But believe that you are the real deliverer. Once you are deliverer, they will be taker or they will absorb everything. Good, you speak. Group discussion and, and participation in extracurricular activities. Teachers can play important roles by importing to sharing knowledge with the students. Not only English, something about morality, ethics, 
family life, everyday life, games, sports, what is happening around in the world, current affairs. Sometimes in like mood, you can impart a lot of knowledge to them. Don't just make them bookworms. Also give them extra knowledge, maybe in pieces. They learn very well. Our students are receptive. They never ignore knowledge because they're meant for learning. And if you give them real knowledge, they receive it. But always believe, never rebuke them, never criticize them, never abuse them, never beat them. Because you have to be an ideal teacher. With the passage of time, when they will grow up and you will be at home or you know more in the world, they will remember you always. Because you have given them something very valuable, precious. And then they are their assets. Your knowledge that you deliver to them is assets for them. They will keep it in safe custody. And it's worth remembering knowledge is the best knowledge that you deliver honestly and diligently and sincerely. They are most eager to learn. We teachers can do best by teaching our students diligently and properly. Giving the test and examinations. Give them tests, small tests, use of words, correction of errors, some grammar rules, narration, active words, passive words, changing form of sentences from negative to interrogative, from affirmative to negative and interrogative and so on. This practice will help them improve their knowledge very well. Small task, small classwork, but they'll work very well. Once again, I will mention Finland. If students go there, which parents send their children there when they attain the age of seven. Rest of the time before attaining age of seven, they stay at home and teach, uh, parents teach them. So when they be at school, after having attained seven years of age, they learn a lot. And they are not given homework, not at all. They are taught whatever is taught to them in, at schools. They go home without books or bags. They remain at ease. So the way they teach is marvelous. Because they believe that a, a student of having seven years and above is able to learn everything. Maybe physics, chemistry, mathematics, biology, English, whatever. And I said earlier, teachers from all over the world who want to be real teacher, they go to Finland to learn methods of teaching. And believe it that teachers having PhD degree are teaching primary classes there. It doesn't mean they are paid lowly. They are not paid lowly. They are paid highly. Lucrative salary with fringe benefits. And they enjoy their lives in teaching. And they are proud to be teachers because they first learn how to teach, then import knowledge according to teaching matters. And they teach just like in a very marvelous way, which is never, never forgettable. We always forget. They always remember, teachers always remember students. Giving tests and examinations to students regularly to assess their knowledge, confidence. This is a matter of some passions. You have to be passionate. Doesn't mean you just engage classes and then to, you went away. No doubt, you, are, you have certain sessions to engage. But you have spent some extra time as well for students. Go through the assignments, give them extra work, maybe here or they may be doing in the leisure time, that will count very much. Dictation, spelling and correction is very important. It's not old way of teaching. I remember the way we were taught by teachers. They gave us dictation. They, they, they checked it, especially grammar and spelling. And that helped us a lot. You can also do this way, give them dictation orally or from a textbook or from the work you have already taught them, they will learn spelling and also you can correct it. Your students can do a lot. Also teach them how to use that word in different ways. For example, wage and wages, wood and woods, iron and irons, bread and butter. Also teach them why ace is not used with noun bread. It is always used singular to be the same spelling without adding ace or es to it. Aircraft, without S, always plural, singular, same spelling. Innings, news, genes, they are always used as with S, singular and plural. So teach them the proper rules as well about orthographic spelling rules. They will learn a lot. Sometimes your students come up with great ideas that you will be surprised to know them. 
because they have certain inlet qualities in them they express them if you help them they will outshine many in the real world practical world and that will be your name your student is the ambassador of your school your college and yourself identifying parts of your speech very important thing we also call them words of speech there are eight parts of speech plus articles they are also known as word of speech or part of speech teach them properly for example work noun work verb with the same spelling in normal life work never takes a with it make plural but when it comes to work on large scale engineering works building works fire works then it takes a with it when literary artists or some some scientists undertake some work in different forms for example poetry prose novel or some other discovery or invention then works is used works of william shakespeare works of john milton and so on so teach them how to make difference between singular noun and plural noun it is your duty and when you teach you don't only import your knowledge you multiply your knowledge you know the ways a student can understand what you mean so teacher as a teacher you can play wonders words have different shades of meaning and uses for example make and take as verbs both have more than 70 meanings 70 different meanings go is a small verb g or go comprising two letters but it has 36 meanings so you can tell them how these words are used you can pass stop for a moment give them something verbally or may write that thing on the board that will, will be engraved on their delicate memory they will never forget it so as much as possible try to emphasize on words and their use and structures that is the real way of teaching english in prose poetry oral and debates maybe a speech is declamation concert debate they go very well when they are good at vocabulary enrich their vocabulary and the more you work with them the more you get the result make students learn synonyms antonyms homonyms and acronyms synonyms are words having similar meaning antonyms are words having opposite meaning homonyms words with same spelling but different meaning For example, leaf L E A F. Leaves have trees have leaves. Also, a sheet of paper have it something printed or written on it. It's a leaf. Take a leaf out of one's life means follow one's footprints. Idiomatic use. So you can add to their knowledge by giving extra knowledge, and they will be very welcome with them because they're in the process of learning. They're in a foundry. They're just like hot iron. The way you strike it, it takes a shape. the way you like make students learn vocabulary as much as possible vocabulary is very important this small dictionary contains 50000 words averagely each word has 10 meanings so we have 50000 entries in this small dictionary this is world in itself apart from dictionary of medicine psychology philosophy art architecture law This is general dictionary of English literature and language. This helps a lot. This helps in punctuation marks, syllables, word formation, monosyllable, bisyllable, polysyllable, trisyllable, and so on. So this dictionary is a very good reference book. Encourage students to go through it. Have certain copies of dictionary in your library instead of having a books of no use and junk. spend your money invest your money in dictionary and books which are worth reading teachers should enrich their vocabulary you as a teacher should be good at vocabulary you should have a store of knowledge as far dictionary is concerned that will help you and your students to go very well in practical life in writing reading and speaking and communication they should be meticulous means free from errors we all make mistakes no doubt we learn by making mistakes but there should be some end of mistakes it should be as as few as possible so teacher should be fastidious means very 
strong, strict, and very mindful about right spelling and writing and grammar. Word pronounced differently, with different meanings in different contexts. Same spelling, same word pronounced differently. For example, M-I-N-U-T, minute, means time, span time comprising 60 seconds. But, but some matter is very close, very serious, or very trivial, unimportant, we say minute, minute attention, minute matter, with different meanings. Record, R-E-C-O-R-D, noun, record, R-E-C-O-R-D, record, verb, both in American, British English. So you should have some knowledge about these things. So with the spelling, what is spelled differently. And share that knowledge with the student. You should feel suffocated when you have the word in. Put it out through vocabulary and vocal sense. You should learn a lot. When you communicate, you just make yourself unload it. Quite easy. And you feel comfortable. Very satisfied. Because you have done your job. Love your work. Love your job. Love the praise of your work. Love your students. Love your country. They belong to you. As you belong to them, they belong to you. You will be honored everywhere. Love begets love, respect begets respect. Once you become a good teacher, you will be imperishable in the world of souls, in the world of hereafter, in the world of mind and hearts. World pronounced differently with different meanings of words in different contexts. For example, proud. He is a proud man, means haughty. Son, I am proud of your scholarship, in good sense. And I take your scholarship as a matter of respect and pride. And proud as adjective take preposition of. And pride take preposition in. Proud adjective of followed by of. Pride noun followed by in. I take pride in your scholarship. Same sense. I am proud of your scholarship. I take pride in your scholarship. Teach a student different way. From noun point of view, verb point of view, adjective point of view, from verb point of view. That will make very good sense in the class. <laughs> Words having different meanings, very important thing. It's a grave matter. The matter seems grave when a gambhir, very important. Grave is a place where you put the dead body in, bury it, him or her. That is called grave. Pan, P E N, pan. Pan down, means write down. Pen is a small place where we keep goats and sheep as a fold. Same as spelling, pen. And pen is also a writing instrument. So with different meanings, with same as spelling, you communicate with the students. They will not only learn, they will enjoy the class. Face, verb, as well as noun. Face things, face hardships, face trouble, face to some direction. The verb, face is also the part of body Allah has given us with very beautiful curves and features, the face. Also powder, a cosmetic, one of the powder we use on face and hands, prickly heat powder, face powder. Powder also means gunpowder. When a soldier in the battlefield fights against enemy, he faces powder, it means gunpowder in the battlefield, in action, other, other meaning. Powder is also verb. Powder is something, we put powder. But when you put something smelling sweet on a piece of food or food or some dish, that is seasoning. You use garlic, something else, chili, or maybe black pepper on egg, you're seasoning it. Maybe you put something dressing on cake with cream, that will be dressing, not seasoning. Things smelling sweet will be seasoning. <laughs> Words having different meanings, grave, pen, paste, powder, sound. What is this sound? Now, it sounds so, it sounds great. You have sound body, means a strong body. You look sound, man, healthy, potential. So they have different meanings. Well, now, place where we take water out, draw water. Well is adverb. You do well, you sing well, you speak well. You, but it's also adjective. You look well. It doesn't mean your way is looking is well. You to me look well. Out of the seer you look well. Means you are healthy, smart, active. It's adjective. It's also verb. 
things went well adverb well done adverb world verb tears welled up in her eyes metaphorically in a poetic sense how can eyes be well but when somebody weeps bitterly or tears run down one's cheeks situation is called tears she tears welled up in her eyes or in her eyes so this is a verb the same thing adverb noun verb adjective learn them and impart this knowledge to the student they were really enjoy the class unfortunately english is now becoming a dead language in pakistan except for some schools and colleges where english is really taken as a great subject and medium is functions and vehicle for medium of communication in the future of the students and teachers apart from that english is now going to going out of fashion now and is with a short passage of time if i am not mis- mistaken most students won't learn english no doubt urdu is our national language sindhi punjabi sarai our native language well they are taking to our heart we believe them respect them but this is one of the mediums of english in communication abroad north america new zealand australia canada england uk you can you can't do without english you have to have english to your credit otherwise things will go good won't go well you can have degree in arabic persian no matter they are one of the greatest languages of the world when the moguls ruled here english was uh, persian was their official language and most part of pakistan people speak saraiki language very good but when it comes to language on international level from teaching and learning point of view english is without we can't go without english we have to we can't do without english we have to learn it it's in, indispensable the better you learn it the better you go ahead also like l i k homonyms i like your habits verb you look like him you look like your father it's adjective things look like when i think look the same adverb they like verb noun likes dislikes from like by adding ing removing e we get liking disliking different words with different meanings man m a n dictionary gives at least seven meanings of word word man person boy who works at our home any man who does some job my man is off today man is used for husband wife can say my man is not home different meanings man is also verb yours is man manned his ship is proper made his ship sail m a n n e d manned so this can be used as verb make and take i already said has more than 70 meanings make is also noun what make is his wife this pen what make is this car what make this phone means company or brand different meaning conceive means to understand to learn mental verb of perception when a female gets pregnant we use verb conceive now now is conception means soch nazariya thinking also conception means pregnancy same is spelling different meaning periods means sessions and medical science gynecology when a woman has menses that is called pens periods but our teacher said i have periods today <laughs> quite a strange how can a teacher male teacher can have periods he has sessions he has classes to engage or deliver lecture it looks completely awful very strange when a teacher can say i have periods today a male teacher can't have periods all these things look so foolishness or strange language when we deliver in the class or before the people who are sensible provoke means create something make somebody know also provoke means irritate somebody different meaning cudgel a stick for striking somebody cudgel i will cudgel your brains when i will take out your brains 
means punish you. It can be used as in common sense, also idiomatically. Kajal. Filter, noun as well as verb, means sift something through, through filtration. That's not filtration. Cross, a mark opposite one another, or cross means pass, or cross adjective, you look cross, means you look upset, angry, different means. He crossed my answer, he crossed my assessment, means completely rejected it, didn't accept it. Poor, P-O, you are poor, means something going inside, put inside, like pouring tea. He poured his feelings, means he mentioned, expressed his feelings. Hide, noun, a skin of some animal, or hide means to conceal, with different meanings. C, H, W, a small place before church, where, where there is some graveyard, small graveyard, it's called church. Big is called cemetery, cemetery, small place that is used for, uh, maybe for productivity or agriculture, some other purpose of church belongs to church. And also some place where there are some graves, especially according to dictionary, a place where church owns it and takes income out of it, called C. Then I can see, and I understand. C is also visual or verb of perception, is having a look at somebody or something, different meaning. Dig means take earth out of, maybe from mine, when was playing, for making a ditch or a grave, dig. Something was digged out, means known, taken out, understood, perceived, conceived, different meaning. Also reckon, means to calculate, calculate, also to estimate, to come to some result, reckon, and also bolster, tul takia, round, that we give the back for support. It's called bolster. It's also a verb. Bolster means support. So with these different meanings, we can add a lot to the knowledge of the use of moral verbs. They are at least nine. May, might, can, could, should, would. They are helping verbs. They help make sense, they help other words. It should be better, it could be better, it could be disaster. But they are used very carefully. For example, it is very important that you come in time. Important means you should, should is understood. It is very important that you should come early, it's wrong. It is very important or most important that you be in time, you work hard, you should be in the office without use of important or imperative. Some modern verbs don't take this kind of other adjective. Also French words, we have certain French words in English. For example, in Prisoner of Zanda by Anthony Hope. Novel was manuscript written in 1892 and published first in 1893. It has been so popular, became so popular that in most of the countries it was read as a textbook. Then it was translated in many, many languages in the world, only because of art of writing. Anthony Hope made marvels in character, scene, Oslo, capital of Norway, and characters and way of writing. He created a real picture of that country, the prisoner of Zenda. And you can see he has used certain words, for example, Zendeva, R-E-N-D-E-Z-V-O-U-S, means secret place of meeting. Where he went to see Lady Anthony, Lady Anthony. Chato, we say Chato, C H A T, is Rishama, Miss Fort. So, certain words you will find in Bacon's work, poetry, prose work, Milton's poetry, and Shakespeare's work. They are French words. They are very much influenced by Latin and French. Originally, like Sanskrit in India, which is known as the grand grandmother of languages, in India, South Asia, there was Hind uh, Sanskrit. And it, it, its words are very much in many languages. For example, Chinta, Taka, Mani, Chinta, Manavari, Ganti. So these words also are very much 
seen in poem works of John Milton, John Gray, William Shakespeare, John Milton. Latin words, for example, dict, D-I-C-T, dict. It's a root word or base word or stream word. From dict, we have dictator, dictate, dicta- dictation, prediction, dictionary. We get these words from dict, means to say, to pronounce. We have expect, means a manzer, a condition, a suratel, a milio, surroundings. This is also base or root word. It means to see, to have a look. From expect, we have spectator, spectacle, inspector, inspectation, inspection, inspectorate, retrospect, introspect, spectators from this root. Dent means tooth, dental, dentistry, dental cream, dental brush, we have from dent. Side means to kill, homicide, genocide, pesticide, insecticide, regicide, maticide, patricide, means killing. We have these words from side. Vision means outlook, vision means sight. Vision means the way you think about something or your future prospect is what you want to do. Vision of Sakharaivi, vision of this department, vision of general, our leaders of Pakistan. So from vision, we have visionary. We have visionaries. These words. All the human faculties, all the human faculties, maybe these things, maybe five senses or six common sense or intelligence. And all these human faculties, several languages are just stored. They are inborn. They are within us. We have to put them out, improve them, and present the way we should. So as teachers of English, we can work hard. We can take our friends, this country, our homeland. This subject as a not only mean of naming, a means of transferring patient's knowledge to students who are, are not students' children, they are ambassadors of our institution. And with hard labor, devotion and commitment, we can make them our real devotees. They will part the same knowledge to other people. In this way, knowledge will not be just limited or stored. That will be multiplied, dissipated, far and wide. There's a phrase in English proverb, teacher is abroad, means teacher is everywhere. Who says we suffer from illiteracy? Not, not. We don't suffer from this. We suffer from dormancy. We suffer from laziness. We suffer from irresponsibility. We suffer from false pride or just man-made way of living life. We, have, we can do a lot. Our students, our teachers, our institutions, our alternator, our t- principal, our mentors, they are really marvelous. They can make very much for us. So you, our teachers, our colleagues, our brothers, our sisters, our daughters, do your best. Come up with everything new so that you can impart as much possible as well and the best way possible. They will give you respect, honor, real honor, and the best you can own or acquire or hope for. That's all.